Welcome to the Together for Good podcast brought to you by Bethany Lutheran Church in Cherry Hills Village, Colorado. Today's episode is a conversation between myself and Brian Jaster, the director of Faith Formation here at Bethany Lutheran Church. Brian's come on before. He's always fun to talk with. And today we just sat down. We were having a good conversation ourselves and thought, hey, this might be interesting for other people to listen to. This is a conversation about the future of the church. (laughs) Um, And not that Brian and I know exactly what that looks like, but more so we just want to talk about what is it going to mean to be the church following this whole pandemic that we've lived through. There's a lot of interesting theological kernels to this conversation, as I'm sure you'll hear. And if you wanted to get your Bibles out, Brian reads from Romans chapter 8. And that's a really good passage that kind of influences our whole conversation. But as always, thanks for listening to this. Thanks for liking these episodes and subscribing to the podcast and telling your friends about it. Feel free to leave us a review in the iTunes store. And yeah, please let other people know. Or if you have ideas for the podcast, I'd love to hear them too. I'm really excited about bringing on some more guests and taking some new angles moving forward. But thanks for your support. Here we go now. A conversation between Brian Jaster and myself on what comes next for the church. Okay, so I'm here with Brian Jaster. We haven't had him on the podcast in a long time. Welcome back, Brian. Where the heck have you been? I've been right here. You haven't invited me. It's yeah, been you've too long. You've waited way too across long. Across the hall. I know, I know. Uh, but today we want to talk about the future of the church. And let's just start by saying, uh, Brian and I don't really know. <laughs> no, <Nope. laughs> This is not our um, grand plan for the future and what everyone should be doing. No crystal ball. But it was the best snappy title that we could give to this podcast and conversation. Yep. Really what we want to talk about is what, what happens with church coming out of a pandemic. We've lived through a weird time. And what's inter- there's just a lot. We were chatting about this. There's a lot of theological weight to what's going on and what happens next. And that's probably a good place to start. While we don't necessarily know what the future looks like, it's always a good idea to look at the Bible and to look at our life of faith and see like, okay, so what what is what does the good book have to say about what comes after a painful year and a difficult experience? Um, it looks like you found the good book in my office. Yep. You've opened those Bibles before, huh? Yep. Well, I, and for us, I, you know, any chance we get to go to the Great Romans 8 is, is a good time to do it. And... I, as I hear part of this story, I, I hear our moment. I hear our now, and I also hear a little bit of our future. Um, so this writer is writing to a community who is in the midst of suffering, in the midst of pain, in the midst of crying out, Abba, Father, in the midst of groaning um, and dying and death. Like It's not like, oh, I lost my iPhone charger, I'm so sad. It's like legitimate, deep, pain and suffering and groaning mm. and in our time I, 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 I just mm, the groaning is there and it's sometimes silent it's sometimes known it's sometimes heard and so in this story the people cry out Abba Father and the spirit the spirit witnesses that the spirit suffers with Jesus we suffer with Jesus so they might be glorified with him and this writer says the sufferings of this time are not even worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us so however bad these sufferings are, there's something new, something being born, something being made that is going to set us free from this time. It's going to be like resurrection all over again. And he goes on to say, like, we know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And I think one thing about the pandemic I keep thinking about is that it has been wide and broad. And long. And long. <laughs> Wide, so long. broad, and long. It's like almost in moments it feels like we're groaning with no future at all. Like, how can we imagine a future? Because we're just as wide and long and terrible, and, and it's real death. Well, and we, I think we've really felt that, too, yep. in terms of planning. Totally. Here at the church, it's, you can't, we don't even know how long this was going to go on. Yep. And and we every time we thought like oh well you know by by Easter it's gonna be gone mm-hmm. no like it just kept going and that was its own level of frustration yep. that was its own level of frustration keep going I interrupted totally. you but I just no, it's, it's been good. such a part of our experience and that's part of the, yeah that's part of my own personal growing absolutely is like we want to see life 
We want to see activities that matter for the sake of our world, the sake of people we know and love, and we have to wait. And that waiting feels like that longing, that longing to become something, the longing to be set free, as this whole Romans 8 begins to say. And, and that the Spirit is groaning with us to me is significant. But hmm. for those who wait, though, for those who groan with the Spirit, they groan in, inwardly, though they will be the ones to receive the, what they, the Bible calls the first fruits, the very beginning of this redemption, of this new thing. So Romans 8 does what all of Scripture does, which says that it is actually through pain and through groaning and through emptiness and nothingness that life can begin. Through all of this stuff, you know, you're not groaning into death. You're groaning into life. Something's being born in this time. Something's being resurrected and made new. Um, yeah, and that's, Paul writes all that, and it's not like Paul just made that up. Paul is basing this all on what he knows about the crucifixion. Because that really is yep. the, the center point and the cornerstone of our faith, where this type of theology is really yep. birthed from as well, is that yep. Jesus willingly encountered death and nothingness and abandonment and, and all of that groaning, all those negative mm -hmm. pieces, and somehow brought new life out of it. It's not like that Jesus just like took care of it and now it doesn't happen anymore. But Jesus like put all the attention on it mm -hmm. and in that way redeemed the experience of it as well in some ways. Yeah. It, it gets it gets really muddied and it's kind of hard to think about because it's, it's almost like a dub, double negative. You know, you're taking the... Jesus is taking death and putting it to death. And yep. from that comes new life. Yep. But that's that's really yeah, that's a lot of what you're saying there. Yeah, and you know, just thinking about like examples of kind of how this happens, you know, and, and you know, it, like if you're a, a someone who's about to be a parent, right? Like let's say you're a guy and your wife's about to be have a baby, right? And you've gone this whole journey and it's gotten harder and harder, and those days are longer, and and the ice ships aren't helping, and raising a feed, and it just feels like suffering for suffering's sake, right? Well, you could, I guess, you know, the ninth month of it, take off for a weekend and you come back after she's given birth and you say, you know, that wasn't so bad, was it? Like, we could do that with a pandemic. We could pretend that this time hasn't happened and look at the new life and say, wow. But if we experience the whole story mm -hmm. and we're with, you know, our spouse in that time, then there's power to it. Because you know that all of that groaning and pain and what feel like that was the end is actually like becoming life again. And so I, I think that's the thing that I, you know, we, I think I want for my, like our community and our world is to both take the story of this season and to say it wasn't like a groan of pain with no hope and no future. It's a groan of pain with hope and with future. And, and, and I think now that we've gone through it together, it's like what's on the other side? Whatever God is creating and stirring up is going to be significant and new and life-giving. And, and we'll be able to say, as, as Paul said into this, like nothing has separated us. Nothing can ever, ever because death itself is undefeated to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And, and I want that for like all the systems that have shaken and have reared up their ugly heads in our world. I want it for all the things that we've noticed in the pandemic that have just been hurtful and harmful. You know, I want new life for, you know, how we manage laws and, and rules like police systems and stuff. I, I want that new life to happen because there's been groaning and, and pain and suffering. And yeah. that's actually real. We can't ignore it. I want it for people who, you know, maybe aren't citizens of a country, right? But how do they have their space and then they know they're beloved and can have life to the full? Like I want that groaning to be known and noticed and for resurrection and life to happen. Yeah, you and it, what what I think needs to be said too, like, because we can get into focusing so much on the redemption and the resurrection and the new life. And that is all absolutely true. But I also know that it's really hard when people are going through yes. the the Good Fridays of it. Yeah. But that's also the beautiful truth is that, like, Jesus, the, it, the whole story is the story. And Jesus didn't just jump mm -mm. to the conclusion. And, and and at no point, I'm sure if we, if we asked Jesus, at no point would he say, like, oh, yeah, like, Good Friday wasn't that bad. You know, no, like, yeah. it's awful. It was terrible. And we can admit yeah. that. Uh, but but I, th that's, the, that's the wisdom of exactly what you're talking about and what Paul's getting at in the letter to the Romans is that we can look at our, because of the power of God, because of 
the compassionate presence of the Holy Spirit with us in our pain, we can believe that there's hope for the future. And that even if we're going through something awful right now, that God's power still can bring some sort of reprieve, redemption, uh, resurrection on the other side of it. And none of that should take away from the actual groaning you're doing, the, the pain and the suffering and the struggle. Because I do know that there's a whole bunch of people right now who, who maybe yeah. just want to stay in that for a little bit too. And, and that's okay as well that maybe you're not there yet and you're not ready to hear like everything's going to be all right because that, that's not that's not what you're saying it's this no this deep wisdom of integrating yeah. all of it because this isn't optimism right and it, also, <laughs> and it also isn't pessimism yeah you know it's not like i can just like think my thing through come with a te- 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 technological gadget and the world will be better and perfect mm-hmm. the truth is, is that there has to be some deep emptying of ourselves deep hopelessness in a sense to actually let hope discover us again and that is, some, and sometimes, yeah, right, a difficult thing to grasp in the moment. But think about people who haven't been able to grieve the loss of life. Right. That's what they like to do. And there's not been any grief resolution. There's not been any spaces where there's hugs and healing and hope. Right? They wait with groaning pain still, the loss of family and friends. Like, so there's no optimism there. There's the yearning for resurrection and hope, though. And I... And I think what part of the wisdom of what Paul's getting at, too, is that in the same sense, we shouldn't avoid or ignore or um, try to, like, avoid the pain either. That there's a process of having to metabolize the struggles that we're going through, right? Like, to integrate it into our system. And it doesn't change the pain and the sorrow that we feel, it doesn't make that any less true, but we, we find a way to make that a part of our story, a part of our healing, a part of our moving forward. Mm -hmm. Um, And because we know, you know, if you, if you just smile and pretend like everything's fine and it'll just go away, like that, that's not actually a solution Mm -hmm. and that'll have longer term, like painful effects. We have to, I really like that word of metabolize. So Mm -hmm. like when you eat food, you metabolize it and it integrates into your system. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what we're talking about. Like, we have to take this last year plus of pandemic time and, and look at it and admit, like, yeah, it was awful at times. And this happened and this happened and this mm-hmm. happened. And yet I claim that as part of my story. Mm-hmm. And I know that God can find a way to bring good out of it. It doesn't mean to say that God, like, put it in our place and said, like, this is a good thing. Any of our pain. God doesn't put, you know, tragedy in our life and says, like, Trust me, this will be a good thing in the end. No, no, no. But the Spirit groans with us. The Spirit is compassionate and suffers with us and helps us metabolize that tragedy, that trauma, for something beautiful and hopeful in the future. Yeah, so like the practical way we, we see this happening, if you're, if you're listening with us here, friends, is like you'll often hear people talk about, like, I can't wait back to get back to normal and return to the way things were. And I, I, like, I, I feel that and I hear that. But the truth is is that we are being made new, brand new, again and again, over and over again. And just like that dad shouldn't have walked into that room and said, well, that wasn't so bad, was it? We get to say, no, this actually is so bad. And yet, <laughs> there is life. Like, so we get to do both of those things. And that all holds us a whole under the both the pain and the groaning, as well as the hope and new life at the same time. And that allows us to actually see and know Jesus himself at work in all of this stuff. And that's where maybe sometimes like our greater world, whether it's Amazon or a sports team, whatever, might not necessarily want to pay attention to the pain because we'd rather just ignore it and get back to happy. Yeah. And life again. The way I like to talk about it, I can't believe I'm going to say this now. This would be a great podcast in the future. No. Um, The, we believe in resurrection, not reanimation reanimation is just bringing something back like everything just going back to normal in the way it used to be uh, but in the movies reanimation is zombies and we like that's gnarly that's that's not what you want like just take the old and dig it back up and prop it up and let it walk around that's not that's not the promise it's something new uh, it's something more whole more complete uh, more the way that God wants it to be and I mean Paul even talks about that in that Romans 8 of I know that the current the current pain will never be anything compared to the future promise. And that's, uh, it, it, all it's to say is just that, that there is 
that hope on the horizon um, that things will not necessarily get back to normal, but get back to good. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying yeah. to think about the way to phrase it. No, and, and I think more good news in this too is like what Romans 8 is, is the Spirit helps us in our weakness. The Spirit sighs with sighs too deep for words. But the Spirit is the one that's active in this time of pain and groan and isolation and pandemic. I often think that other things are active in it, you know, things that are negative or terrible or ripping us apart, which is true in one sense, but for Paul to summon those words in us, for Paul to proclaim that for us, that alone is good news. But then for Jesus himself to take on the very act of pulling all things in new life out of death is, is all we need. And that gives us future, and it gives us tomorrow's church over and over again. It allows us to name the things that have been death-sucking death in this time, whatever it is personally or systemically or all over the place. And at the same time, we get to imagine this future with God who's going to pull us in this brand-new future. And imagine and live it together because God actually needs us mm -hmm. and needs our gifts and needs our love and needs our lives because that's because God loves and cares for our very own lives. And so that's what tomorrow's church is going to look like. Yeah, that is what tomorrow's church is going to look like. And we, we have to do the hard work that comes with that of actually admitting our grief yeah. and, and, and confronting the the trauma of the last year and, and not just pretending like it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Not just saying like, Oh, that wasn't so bad. Was it? Yeah. But, but to actually bring that pain, you know, however it's affecting us into the presence of God, into the presence of Christian community. And having been on a retreat with high school youth just last weekend, the reality of the groans, the pain, the bones of their life. We read this story. It talks about a sea of dry bones. We find ourselves in the number of stories they brought up from that were raw and real and present. And at the moment, it felt awkward. It felt like, oh gosh, this tree treat's supposed to be fun <laughs> and life giving. And here we are, like crying on the ground. But the thing about that was because we went through that together, what that meant for Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, and Sunday morning, it actually felt like resurrection. Yeah. It felt like life together. It felt like laughter and joy. It felt like power and hope. So, like, we went through it on a weekend retreat and it just kind of happened. What if we did it intentionally as a church together for the sake of our world? What if we took that journey journey of groaning and pain and went through it together and we found healing and hope and new life? I think that might be good. I think that's what the church is supposed to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like not so. even just after a pandemic, but all the time. So what do you say, dear listeners? Let's, let, let, let's, let's make that plan for tomorrow's church. Let's do it together. Thanks for listening, everyone. Brian, thanks for talking with us. Come across the hall anytime. You want to record a podcast. We love having you on. Thanks to you for listening. Uh, these are hard conversations, but it's really important pieces for us to be thinking about. It's like we said, it's what it means to be the church at all times, but it seems especially poignant given what we've been living through. Thanks for listening, everyone. Stay in peace. peace.